Hey guys, and welcome to a special video. I decided to step out here on my balcony because it is such a beautiful day. But I also wanted to make a unique video. My normal videos on computing history will return next week. However, as I'm sure you're aware, the COVID-19, that was coronavirus, pandemic is raging worldwide. Unfortunately, the numbers have been rising here in the United States and governments around the country are racing to stop this spread. So I just wanted to take a moment and talk about the technology that is making that fight possible. Now, I resisted making a video like this for a while because it seems like every Facebook page, YouTube channel, and media outlet is making something about it. And really, I just wanted another place where you could go to escape that. However, that content will be resuming next week. However, as I begin to research this crisis, I begin to see the technology that's being used in the fight against COVID-19. Now, if you remember my first two videos, and if you're new to the channel, then I invite you to check those out. I will link those below. Then you remember how I have talked about that I believe technology is a tool. Just like a hammer can be used to destroy and hurt and harm, that hammer can also be used to build a building for shelter. Technology can be used in the same way. Technology can be used for bad and it can be used for good. I believe in this fight against COVID-19, we are seeing how technology can be used as a tool for good. I would like to spend a few moments today highlighting the men, women, and technology that are fighting against this virus. Like I said, technology is a and there are doctors, scientists, and researchers nationwide and worldwide that are working to use technology as a tool for good to combat this COVID-19 virus. There are three primary objectives in this fight. One, we need to prevent this virus from spreading to any new healthy individuals. Two, we need to treat those who have unfortunately already become ill. And three, we need to develop a permanent cure to remove this virus from our society and prevent any new individuals from contracting it. Let's talk about that first one, preventing the spread of the virus. Now, the easiest first thing to do is to limit individual contact. This is where the social distancing and quarantines come into play. So I encourage you to follow those local directions given by your authorities. However, technology is making use of this in some exciting ways. First, there's a company in Boston, Massachusetts that is giving authorities more information on how, how many, and where the virus is spreading. They're doing this by analyzing the sewage data in the Boston sewer system. BioBot Analytics is putting technology, sensors, and other systems in the sewer systems in Boston. They're able to diagnose and track the coronavirus from various populations and know where and how it might be spreading. Now on a slightly more pleasant note, on the other end of the country, researchers at the University of Southern California are currently working on a smartphone app that seeks to build a balance between the unfortunate economic impact we're already seeing and preventing the spread of coronavirus. The app works by alerting individuals if they have been exposed to the coronavirus. It uses anonymous positive cases of the virus to determine who may have had contact with a positive infected individual. It then alerts the smartphone's user that they may want to quarantine and should probably stay at home. This could allow those not exposed to still attend work and shop and hopefully lessen some of the negative economic impacts. Of course, this app is still being tested and poses many questions, the first of which being privacy, but the researchers are working diligently on each of those questions. Now, a discussion about preventing the spread of this virus would not be complete without discussing all the technology that is allowing us to remain connected. Video conferencing and group chats have surged across the world, 
as more people have embraced technology to remain connected to their schools, churches, communities, friends, and families. This technology allows us to be connected, to check in on each other. And in many ways, many people, myself included, seem to be more connected to friends and family as we call daily to check in on each other. Despite the actions used to prevent the spread of coronavirus, unfortunately, this virus has spread and seems to continue to do so. So technology is also being used to treat those who are ill. Now, the first step in this process is diagnosis. Now, even just a year ago, maybe less than that, when people were ill, they used to call their doctor and immediately physically visit the office. However, like we mentioned earlier, this could cause the virus to spread even further. If someone is sitting in a waiting room and they are infected with coronavirus, they could possibly infect the entire office. So telemedicine is surgeon. This is a type of diagnosis that doctors talk to you over the phone or even using video conferencing to make a diagnosis. And technology makers across the world are making this easier and more accurate for doctors. An Israeli company is working on an app that can even measure the heart rate, heart rate variability, oxygen saturation, and more vital signs only using the cameras on your smartphone. Other companies are using the microphones on your smartphone to track your lungs and how the lungs are making sounds. That could be a vital indicator of a possibility of a coronavirus infection. This is allowing the patients and doctors to remain safe at home without coming in contact with those who could possibly be sick. Now, once someone is sick, unfortunately, in the most severe circumstances, they need a ventilator. Now, in the United States, we have plenty of these ventilators. However, this virus is creating a shortage. How can we care for those that need ventilators if there are no ventilators? Thankfully, companies around the country and world have been retooling their factories to come up with new methods to produce these ventilators. But technology here is still coming up with even newer ways to do this. There are hobby groups across the world, and specifically one in Spain, that are using their 3D printers to print new ventilators. That group in Spain that I mentioned has already produced one prototype, and they are working with healthcare professionals and the scientific community to test it. And if their tests come out successfully, 3D printers across the world can be printing pieces of vital medical equipment only with online downloads. Now, of course, there's no cure yet for this virus, unfortunately. However, that has not stopped doctors and researchers worldwide using their technology as tools to find a cure. Doctors have taken viruses from patients and use them to find possible cures. They feed this information to supercomputers and the computers run simulations given the coronavirus against known possible treatments and even current over-the-counter and prescription drugs to see if there might be a solution. These computers are up to 100 times faster than they were even just 10 years ago. And these computers can work 24-7. Artificial intelligence has been helping doctors find possible current drugs that might treat this virus by running those virtual simulations. This deep machine learning and big data has helped researchers nationwide and added to their understanding of this virus. Their research will continue to help researchers develop new cures and possible solutions to this crisis. Guys, in this short video, I've only barely scratched the surface of the power of technology and its many uses to fight this pandemic. If you are interested in learning more about the technology that is being used to fight coronavirus, COVID-19, then please click the link to the blog in the description down below. At the bottom of that blog are all of the resources and research that I read to write this video. And there's a plethora more available on Google. 
I wish I could go into more depth. Guys, I've only just scratched the surface of the power of technology as it's being used to fight this global pandemic. If you'd like to see a more complete list, simply Google it. Or if you'd like to see the resources I used for this video, click the link in the description down below. That'll take you to today's blog, written and influenced by this video. At the bottom of that blog are all the resources that I used in my own research. Guys, this was a truly exciting video. Unfortunately, I wish I didn't have to write it. I wish that we weren't dealing with this pandemic, but unfortunately we are. And technology is being used to fight it. It's really exciting to see technology used for these real world good purposes, rather than just games or Netflix. Technology has real uses in our society, and I hope that you will join me as I seek to explore more in the future. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe and you, so that you will never miss a video. I will be discussing the history of technology next week, and we'll be discovering the future of technology and its uses as a tool for good further. I invite you to follow me on social media. I'm active daily on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Remember, use that hashtag, hashtag tech is a tool. I invite you to share this video with a friend. All right, guys, until next Saturday, thank you so much for joining me. And wash your hands, stay inside, and we're going to fight this virus together.